Milwaukee is known for its breweries, art, culture, and famous sports teams like the Milwaukee Bucks. In the largest city in Wisconsin, you can find local restaurants that feature dishes that can get nowhere else. I'm Arthur Ersink, and in this episode of Local Food Travel, we'll be visiting three local restaurants, each adding their own unique flavor to the city, and range from having been around for just over a year all the way back to the 1920s. Let's dive into Milwaukee's Lower East Side, home to UW-Milwaukee college students and historic landmarks. A hidden gem restaurant is making their mark with its special barbecue recipes. But first, let's take a look at one of the most prominent historical buildings in the area. The Lower East Side of Milwaukee contains many fun sites and food joints. Close by is the old North Point water tower, built around the 1870s next to Lake Michigan. This tower used to pump 16 million gallons of water, supplying the city of Milwaukee. After a stroll by the Great Lake, head a few blocks west to check out a collection of popular restaurants. This is Crossroads Collective. Containing many restaurants inside this wonderful food hall, displaying interesting, decorative, and bold art, there are many different kinds of food joints to choose from, but one that stands out the most is Heaven Tables Barbecue. This is the place that you come when you're like, when you're like real proud of yourself and you want to celebrate, and you, you know, completed some kind of goal or... You, you just got out of bed and we're just like, hey, I'm going to celebrate. Well, this is our first time trying it today. Yep. And it was definitely exceeded expectations. Uh, the work experience has been very good, really rewarding with the customers, and I enjoy it a lot. You get to be around the meats. You get to have the friendly people smile. They love the food. They enjoy it. They come for the rush. They try to make sure they get the stuff before it's gone, so it's nice. Our most popular item on the menu would be our brisket because people love it and they come for it all the time. I thought it was great. Um, the brisket was fresh and tasted really good. Making this popular food item takes great preparation. We apply mustard first, sort of our base. We use garlic, pepper, salt, red pepper flakes and black peppers. We smoke it, we start it at seven at night and we take them out at seven in the morning. Heaven's Table smokes fish, ribs, and many more items. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Really nice smoke flavor, the whole part. The collard greens were really good. Incredible. Yeah. The collard greens are really good. It was great. All the food was prepared right in front of me and it tasted really good. So. We really like the people. It's a casual crowd. They love the food. When you find us, it's worth it. Overall, I would say it's a great experience. Seeing that brisket would make a vegetarian's mouth water. So sitting today with me is owner and founder of Heaven's Table, Jason Alston. He's been running Heaven's Table for over two years, and he's also the chef. Jason, what's going on, man? How you doing? Man, how's it going? Good, good. good. Yeah, nice to see you, too. Yeah. So uh, tell us, when, you, when did you start getting the passion for, for, for barbecue, and, and you know, how did you, you know, come to a career? How did you make it a career decision? Uh, I think I was about 13. Um, I used to go to my grandparents' house a lot. Granddad had a, uh, one of those old oil barrels mm -hmm. that people convert into grills. So he had one of those, and um, he would find any reason to 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 barbecue because uh, they were grillers, they weren't smokers. And so um, he would put anything from bear to, to whatever he could find on there. And uh, I was one of those kids who, and I always tell people I never really liked to, I played, but I always liked being around the food. Yeah. So it was at a young age. 
Yeah, so, so you know, some of the barbecue skills you learn come from like the Texas Pitmasters. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about some of your mentors, some of the other mentors that, um, that you've had. One of my mentors, well, before I even started barbecue, my mentor was, uh, he still is, is Justin Carlisle for Arden. Um, Kurt Fugel, he owns Bass Bay Brewhouse. Um, they actually helped me develop my first rub. And I, I don't even know if they remember that. Like the first barbecue rub I ever made, they helped me make it. And so from there, I began to tweak it. And then, okay, let me put it on meat. And so before I even hit the smoker, I put it in the oven. And I, I remember I used to put it at 200 degrees for about 12 hours, just to kind of get that down packed. And um, it used to turn out really good. So um, one of my other mentors is Alex. He owns Firewise Barbecue. Uh, he only works like six months out the year which I wish I could do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those guys are really, really inspirational. So. so I guess what's more important, the, the rub or the smoke? I want to say both are equally important, basically depending on what the meat is. Mm -hmm. Like for brisket, we only use four ingredients. Um, for pork shoulder, you might want to get a little more creative because it's a little harder to penetrate that, that flavor with mm. that, so unless you inject it. Yeah. So tell me about your uh, your education. Where did you uh, where did you go to school, and uh, and how did those experiences in school translate to where you're at now? So I went to uh, MATC. Um, I graduated in 2013. Um, I have my associates in um, in culinary and uh, hospitality, and so what basically got me started and got here was realizing that I didn't want to be a tow truck driver anymore, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm just going to cook. So I decided to come here. Uh, great, great program. Um, took about three years because I had no college credits. Um, and came across a lot of great instructors that helped me along the way to learn what I know now. If you could travel anywhere in the world, uh, where would you go and what would you eat? Texas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would go back to Texas and I would definitely see what they're doing differently than we are. Um, uh, instead of seeing it on the internet, just actually see it myself. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then tell, tell us about the restaurant. We, we got sp anything special going on right now? Or? So we're starting uh, Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing uh, bourbon glazed uh, baby back ribs uh, starting tomorrow, actually, I want to say. Mm. May not be tomorrow, but it's probably tomorrow. Um, and also on Fridays, we do smoked salmon. Um, Saturdays, we do Texas cut beef ribs. Um, and yeah, we pretty much try to bring different things to people. Yeah, and what's that experience being with uh, with the Crossroads Collective? How is it? How is it to be with all the other vendors? Well, that's awesome. We all basically become friends, um, and just like brothers, you you get into you know disagreements, but it's in a good way. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's awesome working and seeing these other businesses prepare. It gives you ideas on things to do. You know, with your next ventures. Um, and being in Crossroads is a it's a it's a great place to test your brand, um, and and if your brand is gonna work, you'll be able to know from there. Do you ever uh, come up with any like collaborations, like mix-ups with some of the other vendors? Yes. So it's a soup and sandwich place called Frida that's in there, and we actually collaborated. I made a smoked chicken salad for them. Mm. So I smoked the chicken and then I showed them how to make the salad, and we we sold out pretty much the same day. So that sounds awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, how many days of the week can they, if they come to the Crossroads Collective, will they be able to see you behind the yeah behind the counter? So yeah. in the AM. <laughs> so I pretty much open. I close some days, uh, but we open at eleven. We're at uh, two two three eight North Farwell inside the Crossroads Collective. So um, I'm pretty much there every day. Well, that's great, Jason. Yeah. Hey, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, take care. We'll come right. down and see you. Awesome. All right. Well, brunch is a good trending mixture of breakfast and lunch. It is a good way to have some interesting options depending on what you are in the mood for. The restaurant cafe will serve you a nice, cozy Mexican style brunch. For the outdoorsy type who's looking for a good stroll through the winter wonderland, head south to Bayview and check out Humboldt Park. With activities for all seasons, there's plenty to do within their 72 acres. After you build up an appetite, just a little down south is Sobrosa Cafe and Gallery. Combining more than just art and food, Sobrosa takes a classic French breakfast and a traditional Mexican lunch to create a meal that you will never forget. Everybody is really nice. The authenticness of the food is amazing. Sobrosa's opened up, uh, coming up on two years now. It's run by Frankie and Ruben. 
Uh, everything we do here, we try to do it to the best of our ability with the greatest amount of love. Everything we do is fresh and organic and that's what we strive for, to make everything taste good and just be delicious. So Brussels means delicious, so there it is. Honestly, we get kind of an artsy crowd, which is really nice because everybody is super understanding, they're really polite, um, and they just want somewhere to go where they can sit down and look at cool art. I love the atmosphere. Um, a lot of restaurants in Milwaukee tend to be a little overstimulating, but this is the perfect blend of good food, good music, good atmosphere, but it's not too much, and it's not trying to force something at you. It kind of lets you sit and experience and enjoy for yourself. The SBS BBS is like perfect breakfast sandwich. The bacon sandwich is two pieces of toast with eggs, our special bacon that we make in house, the sauces, our avocado crema that we make in house, also our sour cream that we make in house. Amazing poached egg. You could put that poached egg on bread, toast, biscuit, it's phenomenal. And it's just very special. I've had a lot of the food, yeah. I've been working here for uh, for over two years, so I've I've picked my way through that menu, and then so. I eat here probably every day, and I haven't gotten sick of it, so at, that, is, that is saying something. I would just say we're a lot more than just a cafe. You know, you come in here and you can get some phenomenally well thought out dishes um, that you don't necessarily get everywhere you go. We do all of our bakery fresh and in-house. Um, and everybody's just really inviting. All the staff is friendly, we're all friends with each other. Um, and it's just been a really great opportunity getting to work here. My friend has been here a couple times and really enjoys it, um, and I can see why, and I definitely plan on coming back. Come and try it, it's amazing. Because there's not a single thing on this menu that isn't phenomenal. But what are you waiting for? Get in here, um, the food is amazing, we've got a great staff, uh, everybody's making sure that everybody comes in, they feel welcome, we'll take care of you. Having a really nice brunch on the weekend surrounded by art can make people feel good on a relaxing day. Sitting here with me today is owner of and head chef of Sabrosa Cafe, Francisco Sanchez. Francisco, hey, thank you for Hello, coming. Thank really you appreciate for it. Me. Yeah, appreciate so it. I got to ask you: uh, Are you more of a breakfast guy or a lunch guy? Uh, kind of depends. I mean, I, I think more breakfast. Uh, lunch and dinner has always been part of my uh, uh, platform, but brunch. I mean, uh, breakfast is like a lost art form, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to dig my teeth into it creatively. Yeah. So, and I think we've done a pretty good job so far, so. Yeah, so tell me, so how did you come up with the concept for a brunch, uh, brunch location with a Mexican theme? Well, uh, my partner and I, Ruben P. Reinen, uh, we actually, he's a professional um, a classical pianist, mm -hmm. and um, we're both artists, and we just kind of stumbled upon this project, actually, because um, we were gonna do my sauces that I've done over the years, um, and just do retail because I thought it was age appropriate, but it really isn't. It's, <laughs> it's pretty manic. It's crazy. It's a crazy business. And we were renting from um, the Gouda Girls, oh, yeah. uh, the grilled cheese truck. Shout out to them. They're, they're awesome. Yeah, they're um, awesome. And uh, they offered us the building and they gave us a super great deal and they wanted us to succeed. And the only way I was going to do another restaurant was to do breakfast and lunch because I didn't want to do dinners anymore, mm. to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I didn't want to live my life like that anymore, yeah, so. Tell me about um, these sauces, that's what I wanna. Um, it's just something that uh, my family, okay, so my family, uh, long line of chefs, and we always cook, we're Latino, you yeah. come to our house, you eat something, yeah. you know, so um, we just developed our own little take on everything. Mm -hmm. Every house has their different sazon, yeah. is what we say, um, and I took that, and added liquor, and it's now mine. So <laughs> everything has liquor in it, or wine or yeah, something. Yeah. So, but oh, it's that delicious. Sounds, that sounds incredible. So what, what's uh, you know, if you're gonna have a breakfast taco, if you're gonna like invite me over and you're like, I'm gonna make this guy some breakfast tacos. What would what would you put on that taco? Well, first of all, I'd make my own uh, chorizo, which mm. I do in house. Mm. I, that way, I can hit my exact flavor or what I feel yeah. is appropriate. Um, and people love it. Uh, so scrambled eggs and chorizo in a taco. Say no but I, I really wanted to exit from the Mexican corner of which I was in for forever. Yeah. And just just to enable me to 
explore whatever it is that I feel. I do a lot of French, mm. I do some German, I do Asian, I do Mexican and different Caribbean. Um, I do barbecue and I mix it up. I'll make anything into um, a Benedict. So I was just talking to the guys back there and I just did a uh, grilled cheese Benedict. What? How do you, it tell was me about in this. What? It was grilled cheese, grilled tomato slices, egg hollandaise simple yeah. and it was just out the door bam bam That's everyone awesome. was ordering it um so just little things like that it's interesting it's fun yeah. to find out what it is that works here yeah and actually i called it a panini um something on the last menu and it didn't sell so i pulled it then i called it a grilled cheese <laughs> a grilled then cheese it, <laughs> and then it sold i'm like okay That's well it. That's right. So, I mean, the creativity is evident in the food, but also in the space. Art is a big part of your cafe, right? Absolutely. So, we, when we thought about uh, building our, um, our business plan, we thought, well, what, what is a good hook? You know, why would we exist in the first place? Because that's the first question you ask yeah. yourself when you're yeah. building that. Um, and uh, because it is so competitive. Mm -hmm. And I did start out in Bayview back in 96 before... Bayview was the hotbed. We were uh, the first restaurant to arrive in the Bayview area. We introduced uh, Milwaukee to fish tacos and to, to Chipotle mayonnaise, believe what? it or not. Well, thank it was, you. It I was, appreciate it. It's not exist my favorite thing. Before right. that, everyone thinks that Lulu's or GTO yeah. was the first. We were the first. Wow. Um, but we were renting, though, too. Now we own this building, and I can't imagine it any other way. Uh, we stand alone on our street, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it, you can pull up and park. But anyway, so the music, um, we have a baby grand piano in there, yeah. and we rotate the art. Do you play? Absolutely. What? The baby grand? No. Come Chopsticks, on. maybe. Okay. The, 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 right. That's about it. Um, and then the art changes. So we have art openings uh, about every other month. That's right. And so we're a breakfast and lunch concept, so yeah. it's 7.30 to 3.00. And then we have our Sabrosa After Dark series, so that could be anything. So we just did yeah. a um, dinner, Valentine's well, dinner concert. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Francisco. Okay. I'll, right. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I'll All be right. in in the morning. Please do. All right, All right. appreciate right. it. Thank you so much. The value of tradition is important in all parts of every culture it holds and maintains the origin of the history. This one family restaurant has been passing on the tradition for many generations. Just outside of Milwaukee is West Dallas. Once called Honey Creek, the town grew into a city after an industrial manufacturing plant opened in 1901. Even before this growth, the citizens prioritized education, building a one-room schoolhouse for a grand total of seven children. Today, that same building has been converted into the West Dallas Historical Museum, preserving the city's history for the next generation. For a different look at the city's traditions, drive northeast to Kegel's Inn, a restaurant and hotel that focuses on German culture. Passed down through four generations, Kegel's has been family owned since it opened in 1924. There's a lot of interesting people that come to Kegel's. They come for a nice experience of dinner of great homemade German food and this is the place to get it. All the people that have been coming here way before any of us were born, and it's just a connection you have with them. They've been coming here 30, 40, 50 years, and it's just a neat little place. Uh, several times throughout the like, years, maybe as early as 30 years ago. The first owner, John T. Kegel, was convinced by a longtime friend to open and operate a soft drink parlor. This same parlor became a restaurant when passed down to his family for four generations. Kegel's Inn is fortunate enough to have the history, the great recipes, and the great clientele that want to just come and enjoy it. Everything in this kitchen is from scratch, so it's a lot of work into it. Um, upholding the traditional cooking values and ways that this family has brought their recipes over here. Um, I had a two sausage platter and I do like it. It's very good. And duck is our is a really good one here. It's slow roasted. We debone it and we crisp it under a broiler. 
with stuffing, gravy from scratch. Yeah, everything's good. So. Delicious. We have a lot of regulars and they bring their family from across the state and even outside of the state to come here to experience it because our walls are special and when you come in it's a completely different atmosphere. Come and experience it. I mean, you won't find another place like it. I mean, this is a, a dying breed here. I mean, it's old and we're going to keep it that way instead of all the modern stuff that's out there. It's nice to come back to history. You like sour brat and you like pork shanks, you like roast duck, you like um, some of the old German red cabbage and things like that. You're not going to find it anywhere any better because I know firsthand that it's all made from scratch here. A nice, exciting place for family and friends to have some good traditions of German food. Here with me is fourth generation owner of Kegel's Inn, none other than Julian Kegel. Julian, what's up? How you doing? Fantastic. Welcome to the set. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, talk to me about uh, West Dallas and German food. Um, are there any other German restaurants in West Dallas? Actually, I don't know if there is. We kind of uh, sit in a silo of German heritage, yeah. uh, left over from you know generations of Germans in Milwaukee. And there was German restaurants everywhere, right? I mean, we could yeah. name a, a hundred um, from from an old history book, right? And I'm sure John Gerd has got the, like the list, right, of <laughs> no like doubt. where we came from. Yeah. Um, but there's no, there's only a couple left, and you have to go six miles from the lake uh, to come to West Dallas, and you find the best German food in the city. What would you say is the signature dish uh, at your restaurant? For me, it's the duck. I didn't try anything else for 20 years. No joke. Wow. Right? We'd come for Christmas, and I'd look forward it forward to it for months yeah. um, before I actually got the, the you know the homemade stuffing, the scratch made gravy, homemade uh, cranberry relish. It was like Thanksgiving, Oof. three uh, you know a month later, yeah. and ten times better. So come to Kegel's in for the duck. Mm. People are torn. You know the Wiener Schnitzel is fabulous. We use Strauss veal. Um, hand pounded on our, you know, ma uh, massive ancient. Is great. Yeah, right. they're fabulous. Mm -hmm. But on this big antique butcher block, and there's just like this, and this authenticity that you can't really find in yeah. a lot of restaurants. It's got to be pretty excited to be part of the uh, new resurgence in West Dallas, right? People yeah. didn't always think of West Dallas and amazing food, but now mm -hmm. I think that's out there. I think people are starting to talk about it. Yeah, I think the word's out, really. Yeah. Um, and West Dallas and Dan Devine. The whole city uh, staff is really on board with making West Dallas the next place in Milwaukee. That's mm -hmm. that's going to take uh, investment and take development to the next level. That's great, right? So tell me, like, so I've seen some pictures. You guys have an ice rink in the front of the restaurant. Tell me about this ice rink. Yeah, well, it was our beer garden in the summer. So drink a beer, have a brat and a fish fry on a Friday night, listen to oompa music. That's now uh, frozen tundra, essentially. Yeah. I was a glacier guide in Alaska for a couple years, and it's just it's just so good to bring bring that ice back right onto the road. Yeah, yeah. It's free to the public. So you're seven in the morning, you want to get up and come ice skating, you can do that yeah. right now. Uh, talk about your selection of beer, because I know I've been in there, I've tried some of the beers, but you guys have an amazing selection of German beers. Yeah. So tell me about that. You know, we try and pick one character, mm -hmm the best of it, right? So if it's a Pilsner, or if it's a Kolsch, or a Dunkelweiss, we've chosen ones and we've stuck to them. So you've got great consistency over generations yeah. that people come back and they say, I had this beer the last time my grandma turned 80 mm -hmm. and she's been long dead, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So there's this memory that reflushes with all of the experiences that you come back to at Kegels yeah. that just keeps it in the back of your mind, you know, no matter where you are in the world. Yeah. On right. that on that topic, I mean, talk about like, the recipes. Are they original recipes? Are they you tweak the recipes? Or um, what have you guys done? We've really taken everything back to scratch. Mm. So we've identified all the stuff that we wanted to to bring locally, and it's not possible for everything. But if you think about an old German village, mm -hmm. all the food came from within that hintersphere. Yeah. So bring that farm to the table, feed the community. I feel like West Dallas is sort of ripe for that resurgence, right? Yeah, and definitely. like we've been there all along, yeah. sort of maybe outshadowed by bigger uh, German restaurants in the past, but now without them, we sort of shine through. Yeah, I feel like uh, places like yours, they're about to hit this resurgence. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they have been, right? They have, I mean, yeah. I, walk in a, I walk into your restaurant, it's full every night, but I think there's a new generation that, that's starting to get a taste of that style. Yeah, And absolutely. They, just, they just can't get enough of it. Amen. Yeah, right. man. Well, hey, I really appreciate you coming Thanks. out here like this. I'm going to come out and skate on your rink. I'm going to get a beer, and, uh, you know, we're going to have a good time. I love it. That's the whole point. Yeah, thank right. you so much. Cheers. I right, appreciate it. You too. Press.
Uh, thank you to our viewers for watching this very exciting first episode of Local Food Travel. I'm Arthur Ersink, signing out. Thank <laughs> you.